Hello everyone, hope you're having the most amazing day today. Welcome to the Film Inside channel. In today's video, we're going to get into even more bars featured on Bar Rescue and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Rob Benz John Taffer decided to pay a visit to Rob Benz in Oakland, California in a season 7 episode, hoping to save it from closure. Owned by football legend Marshawn Lynch, Rob Benz is an extremely popular bar slash restaurant in the community. Having opened the place back in 2018, Lynch decided to name it after his friend Rob Benjamin who was tragically shot and killed. Since Lynch had other businesses and charities to take care of, he left it up to his family to run things. Generally speaking, his auntie Keisha is the one who leads the business, but she never delegates any of the work which often makes her feel very overwhelmed. This has led to her developing stress-related illnesses that have gotten so bad to the point that she can't even come into work. With a lack of leadership and no one willing to take control of the wheel, the bar was rapidly falling into a downward spiral. Not knowing what else to do, the famous running back player decided to reach out to Taffer and his team for some guidance. Later on, Lynch meets with Taffer in his car outside and passionately describes his love surrounding the bar and its community. One of Lynch's relatives named Dante, who was a bartender, was drinking on the job. What's more, he was rapping and cursing in front of customers, including a mother and daughter who sat at the bar. Upset with what they were seeing, they head into the bar and immediately confront Dante about his behavior. Getting all defensive, Lynch explains that he's the one who pays the bills and that things need to be in order. Leaving and returning the following day, Taffer holds a staff meeting and is introduced to Keisha who expresses how disappointed she was with the staff's behavior. Soon after, Taffer invites mixologist Alex Good and chef Jason Santos to train the staff on the basics. Once they were satisfied with the progress, the bar rescue host decided to perform a stress test which was average at best. While orders did certainly reach the tables on time, many of them sent their drinks back since they were poorly mixed. After resolving the issues present, Taffer was finally able to start working his magic and remodel the bar. Following the renovations, the staff was invited to see the new and improved bar which was renamed to Rob Ben's Neighborhood Soul. On the inside, things were made to seem more modern and a beautiful mural of Lynch from his high school football days was added. Aside from getting new POS systems and other equipment, they got a lifetime subscription to TVT and Partender. Finally relaunching, things went smoothly and the staff as well as the patrons were ecstatic with the new bar. Post Bar Rescue, Rob Ben's sales have increased significantly and their prices seem to have gone down. According to reports, the business seems to be focusing more on food, wanting to become a restaurant with a bar rather than the opposite. Most of the reviews are positive, with many praising the food and drinks, but others complaining about the customer service and rude staff. Hey, at least it's doing pretty good. Calavares, Cochina, and Cantina For a season 7 episode, John Taffer and his team head over to Calavares, Cochina, and Cantina in Escondido, California. Owned by Juan Magana, he decided to purchase the business back in 2018 when it was originally called Anejo's Bar and Grill. Having years of experience in food retailing as well as growing up watching his parents run a restaurant, he was confident in his ability to run an establishment of his own. Initially, Anejo's was a popular spot for locals, always being busy, which made Magana think he bought into a ready-made success. Although this was far from the truth since the owner was forced to shut things down the day he signed the papers due to health code violations. Thanks to the closure, the bar made it onto the local news which gave the place a very bad reputation. Having spent over $250,000 on the business, 70000 of it came from his parents to rebrand things and reopen. Though this didn't work out very well and Calavares is losing $10,000 a month and is $250,000 in debt. To make matters worse, the staff think that their boss is incompetent since he hasn't given them their paycheck in a while. Desperately needing some guidance, Magana called out to John Taffer for some much needed guidance. Upon his arrival with his experts, they don't seem to understand the meaning of the name and feel like the writing on the sign is unreadable from farther distances. Taking a look at the interior through CCTV cameras, they notice that the space is huge but it lacks intimacy. At the very least, they're impressed with the cook in the kitchen who's pumping out orders for 50 people while maintaining good sanitary practices. Sending in some recon to test the service quality, they try to order a Cadillac Margarita and a Tamarindo which both don't taste that great. Heading in himself with a hat, Taffer waits 15 minutes before he's even noticed by a bartender and orders a Cadillac Strawberry which was way too sweet. Meeting with the owner, Taffer gets him to try the drink he was served and he admits that it tastes awful. Soon after, an employee named Jessica reveals that she hasn't been paid in a full month which prompts Taffer to threaten the owner about not rescuing his bar if he doesn't pay the staff soon. Returning the next day, Taffer points out that the restaurant is failing due to Magana's rudeness, the terrible food and drinks, and the general service quality. Bringing in his experts, they train the staff on how to mix better cocktails and cook higher quality meals more efficiently. Arranging a stress test, things didn't go very well since the bartenders were still mixing poorly and the food wasn't being served quickly. After even more training and revamping the menu with the help of the experts, Taffer was finally able to start making some valuable changes. 
Beginning by changing the name to Sierra Madre Cantina, he made the interior more vibrant and nature-themed as well as gave them tons of new equipment. When they finally relaunched, Taffer was impressed with the improved pacing and the customers seemed to be really satisfied with what they were being served. Several weeks after the bar rescue team left, the restaurant sales seemed to have increased and Magana promised to give his staff raises. If you take a look at their Yelp reviews, it seems like they're doing exceptionally well with 4 stars across 126 reviews. Many seem to praise the food and drinks as well as the service quality, which has drastically improved since Taffer left. Assuming you're close to this bar, we certainly recommend giving it a try since they offer takeout and have amazing food. The Sandbar In yet another Season 7 episode, John Taffer goes to the Sandbar Brewery and Grill in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Owned by Sean Cowell, he envisioned opening a beach-themed bar with volleyball courts which was brought to life thanks to Mike Martinez who funded most of it. While things were running smoothly at first, the bar suddenly began to struggle and their profits plummeted. Going back to Martinez and other investors to keep the bar afloat, Cowell's stake in the business was reduced to 10%. As a result of this, Martinez no longer recognizes his partner's ownership of the bar which causes tons of arguments that push even more customers away. Being $600,000 in debt and losing close to $15,000 a month, it was absolutely necessary for Cowell to reach out to a professional for some help. Getting a hold of Taffer, he arrives with his experts who point out that the beach concept is a very good idea, especially for New Mexico. Watching through hidden cameras, Taffer notices that one of the bartenders serves a cocktail in a humongous glass, which distorts the proportions of alcohol to mixers. Next, they spectate as the bar's cook Victor uses dirty fryer oil to prepare the customer's meals, which is absolutely disgusting. Taffer sends in two of his friends to get a feel of the customer service, and they order a watermelon breeze as well as a beach cucumber with nachos. Predictably, everything they were served tasted awful with the drinks being sour and the nachos being stone cold. Having seen more than enough, the bar rescue host heads into the bar and confronts Cowell about his ownership of the business. After looking at some documentation, it becomes clear that he has 0% ownership of the bar and is more of a manager than an owner. Holding a staff meeting the following day, they all point out that the biggest problem is the lack of leadership. Additionally, the volleyball courts are only open 10 hours a week, which is supposed to be the bar's main attraction. To make matters worse, the employees are clearly undertrained, so Taffer calls in his experts to help them get up to speed. Wanting to put their new skills to the test, the bar rescue host initiates a stress test, which ends in a shouting match between Cowell and Martinez, and Cowell gets fired. Following this drama though, the staff was taught how to make new cocktails and meals that would be on their menu. Finally, this was when Taffer and his team were able to start making the proper renovations to bring the place to the next level. Upon the bar's eventual relaunch, the customers fell in love with the new decor and seemed to be having a good time. Aside from the staff being really happy with the changes made, they noticeably improved in their efficiency and service quality. A month after Taffer and his team left, the sales certainly increased but they decided to change their name back to the Sand Bar since they weren't liking the new name. Unfortunately, the bar ended up closing down in November of 2019 since many customers weren't happy with the new management, open times, and poor customer service. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.